How's it going, everybody? I want to do a video on DMBPN that uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for, <coughs> excuse me, as of lately. And uh, actually, one of my more favorite technologies, whether it's specific to the exam or specific to, you know, uh, production. And I've been spending a lot of time on DMBPN as of lately. And uh, I spent a lot of time on it when I was studying for my CCIE, and I still work on DMBPN probably 30, 35% of the time. There's something to, to do with DMBPN. Now, um, I want to cover a couple of things real quick just to get them out of the way. I've been getting a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of stuff going back and forth about um, this technology known as IWAN. Intelligent Wide Area Network. Um, in the description, I'm going to place a link to a really good friend of mine. His name is Steve. Um, he he is also a CCIE. Um, he's the one that turned me onto IWAN, and I wasn't really I had heard of the term, but I really didn't know what it was. And um, the company he works for is another consulting firm, and um, he's a uh, you know he's somebody that I look up to. And so it's definitely something that uh, when it comes, I, I only call people out that I that I deem you know worthy of that of that honor, and uh, yeah, really good guy helped me a lot when I was studying for my CCIE. He passed his long before I ever passed mine, and but that's not the point. The um, uh, he did a really really good blog post about migration from you know to an IOA and deployment. So. Um, this video is not going to be specifically for IWAN, but it's going to be some of the components that make up IWAN. The things that we're going to cover in this video are going to be um, specific to IWAN and not so specific to IWAN. So the very first thing you have to have for IWAN to work is going to be a DMVPN environment. And when I, when I say that, we're going to have a multi-GRE tunnels. We're going to have um, we're also going to have IPsec configuration when we're done, and that's going to be the uh, the main components to getting DMVP up and running. Now, specifically for IWAN, you have what they refer to as a front door VRF, and you have uh, specifically for IWAN, you have a thing known as PFR, PFR version three, and you have zone based. Firewall. Now I'm not an expert on IWAN, so we're not going to even cover this stuff right here. This stuff right here isn't going to get covered. But I'm going to go there. So I'm actually going to erase what I just wrote up there, and uh, because that's going to be outside of the scope of this video. What we will be covering, and it's not in you know somewhat of depth, is going to be the. Oh, let me grab my pen real quick. Is going to be a front door VRF and also um, DMVPN. behind NAT, so NATed. Now, the pieces in here that we're going to talk about, IWAN is made is made up of DMVPN, front door VRF, and sometimes there's some NATing involved, but again, this is not a video specific to IWAN. I'm going to put my friend's uh, blog post link in the description, so hopefully if you're watching this video, it'll be, you know, if you want a, a more specific, he does his implementation a little bit different than what I'm going to do, he goes a little heavier on the encryption with IP2 and stuff like that. We're not going to go that route. Go that route. So um, that's what we're going to be taking a look at. And actually, I just realized that I am covering up. I'm covering up that area with my video. Uh, so let me go ahead and move all of that um, over here. Let me just go ahead and clear the screen real quick. So IWAN is going to be. And I just noticed that because I can't. When I'm recording the video, I don't see that. And down here in the lower right hand corner. Um, that information is covered up with my screen. So um, we're going to talk about, we've already mentioned IWAN, you know, Intelligent WAN. And what we're going to be hitting is DMVPN. We're going to be hitting the multi GRE tunnels as well as the IPsec profile to encrypt them. We're going to talk about front door VRF. And then we're going to talk about DMVPN behind NAT. Now, the way this is going to work is we have BGP running in between here. This is all BGP routed. 
So we're going to have to go in here and get that BGP up and operational. It's actually up and running, so is EIGRP. So once we get everything EIGRP configured, we'll be in good shape. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to run where R2 here is going to be the hub, and the hub is going to be with inside of a BRF. So this interface right here is going to be in BRF DMBPN, okay? And uh, R4 will also be in a BRF, okay? And this will be the same DMBPN. And I'll show you guys how to set those up. We haven't done that. I'll show you how to set the BGP up for it as well. Um, R5 is just going to be regular peering because the, remember the VRF is local to the router. And then we have R6. This will be the, so these will all be spokes. So we'll have this. This guy will be spoke. This guy will be natting. And we're only going to allow through uh, this network right here. That's all we're going to allow through, but it's going to be, um, it's going to be, uh, we're going to have to uh, take a look at exactly how we're going to do that to make sure it'll actually work. And um, we're not going to permit, we're not going to do NAT the traditional way. We're going to do NAT a little bit weird, but it'll still allow traffic that isn't going to go up here to the hub, uh, how traffic will go in. And this guy will be here. We'll have some, you know, uh, HQ subnets. I'll just put H HSN for HQ subnets in there and go from there. So now that I've covered that, and you at least have an idea as to what's going to be going on here, the what's happening here is um, if we go over here to router one, and we have the adjacency, we go to router two, we have a bunch of adjacencies. If I type in do show IP BGP, you're going to see that oh, BGP is not active. So that's that's okay though. And the reason why it's not active is because you know we don't have anything going on at the moment. So I'm going to type in router BGP 2456. Type in no BGP default IPv4 unicast. And I'll type in neighbor of 23.0.0.3 remote AS of 3. And then I'm going to type in um, address family IPv4 and then activate that adjacency. Now, it's going to come up. And once it comes up, it will also grab a couple of routes. So the thing that you need to pay attention to when you're doing this is the way that this is going to be set up, and there's our adjacency, is we're going to place this interface, fast1 slash 1, inside of a VRF, and this guy over here, fast1 slash 0, inside of a VRF. So you guys can see how VRF to VRF configuration would work. It's really not that complicated at the end of the day. Um, just the config is a little uh, unique. And this adjacency will go down. And I'll show you guys how to fix that. And then we're going to go ahead and move it to the other configuration of getting uh, router 5 and router 6 operational. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and type in do show IP BGP. Now you'll see I have all these routes in here, right? And that's good. So a BGP is working in that regard. If I do a do show IP BGP, I'm sorry, do show IP, IP route BGP, we're going to have a few routes in the routing table, right? Well, that's great. And that's what we really want to do. BGP for us is only going to be advertising routes between these points. So we're going to go ahead and type in do ping. I'm going to type in 36.0.0.6 I should be able to ping router 6 and I can that's the important part as long as you have layer 3 reachability that's the main main important part so we're going to exit out of here and we're going to type in VRF definition is going to be DMBPN we're going to uh, activate the address family IPv4 we're going to exit out of here we're going to type in the route distinguisher is going to be and we're going to say it's going to be 2456 colon uh, 1 okay it doesn't make much of a difference what it is as long as it's been defined we're going to come out of here and we're going to type in do show run interface fast one slash one. Okay, that's our configuration. We're going to type in interface fast one slash one and we're going to type in VRF, VRF forwarding is going to be uh, DMBPN. We're going to replace the IP address on that interface and voila. Now, what's going to end up happening is now that we've placed that, uh, that, VR, that interface into a VRF, it is no longer on the global routing table. Therefore, if we were to wait three or so minutes, BGP would fail. But I'm going to show you guys how to uh, make, not make that happen. So we type in do show run section BGP. Our configuration is pretty simple. Once it pulls up, we're in the global routing table. We need to go to router BGP 2456. And we need to type in address family IPv4 VRF DMVPN and hit the enter key. We need to type in this guy right here. Okay, and then we're going to type in 
do show run section BGP. And there's our adjacency. The adjacency came up. That's good. And then we're going to see that it's up here as well. So we're going to exit out of here. We're going to type in no address family IPv4. Do show run BGP again. And then you'll see that that neighbor goes down, but this neighbor is still up. So we type in do show BGP VPNv4 unicast all. You'll see that we have those routes. If we do a do show IP route, though, nothing's there. Only the EIGRP route to router 1. Do show IP route DMVPN. Uh, BRF. Now you'll see the BGP routes in there because we have to point to a different D, a different VRF in order to get those routes, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here and what I have to do now is I have to go in here <coughs> excuse me, and we're going to set up the hub, okay? And we're going to set it up and we're also going to enable encryption at the same time. So we're going to type in interface tunnel 100 we're going to type an IP address of 10.100.1.2 slash 24. Now, if I type in do show IP interface brief, you'll see that the, the tunnel is down. The reason the tunnel is down is we, we haven't specified a source. The tunnel source is going to be, and it's going to be fast 1 slash 1. The tunnel, tunnel mode, which is going to replace the tunnel destination for those point to point GRE tunnels. Is going to be mode GRE multi point. Okay, that's going to bring up our, our setup because now it's going to point to that. We're going to type in tunnel question mark. Now, at the very, very bottom, you see this command right here VRF. VRF and then DMVPN. We're telling the tunnel to, in order for recursion to work, you need to look in the DMVPN VRF. Okay, that's going to get that up. We're going to set the tunnel key is going to be 100. I'm going to type in IP NHRP. The um, map multicast is going to be dynamic. So if we receive multicast updates, go ahead and do a dynamic update. We're going to type in IP NHRP. The uh, authentication is going to be Cisco, all caps. And we're going to type in IP NHRP question mark. We have a couple of other options in here. We're going to say the network ID is going to be one of them, which is going to be 100. And you have the option of doing redirect. Unfortunately, redirect does not work in this uh, version of GNS3, so we will not be able to pull off what they refer to as Phase 3 DMVPN. So we'll be able to do Phase 2, and the way we'll do that is we'll go underneath the EIGRP routing uh, process, and we will disable Next Top Self, and we'll also disable Split Horizon on the tunnel interface. So we'll do that here in a moment, but um, that's going to be what we take a look at here momentarily. So now what we're going to take a look at doing is we have that situated. If we type in do show run interface tunnel zero tunnel 100, this is our configuration. Relatively straightforward, not a whole lot going on, but we need to go in here and make sure that we get everything situated. So I'm going to exit out of here. Now I said we're also going to focus on encryption, which we are. We're going to type in crypto pol or isocamp, isocamp policy, and we're going to say 100 for tunnel 100. Not, it's not actually mapped to that. I just happen to choose the same number, so the naming convention stays the same. And we're going to say the uh, encryption is going to be AES. The authentication is going to be free share. The group is going to be two. And then the uh, hash is going to be a SHA. Okay. Do show run section crypto. And that is our phase one setup so far. We're going to exit out of here. We're going to type in the crypto key ring. And we're going to name the key ring as DMBPN question mark and hit the uh, the VRF because we need to point it to a VRF. The VRF's name is going to be DMVPN and we're going to say hit the enter key. Under here, this is where we're going to specify our pre-shared key. The pre-shared key is going to be Cisco in all lowercase and I'm oh, sorry, the uh, pre-shared key address, sorry, is going to be uh, any address we specify. So we're just going to do it like that and, um, and then the key itself will be Cisco. Okay, that is your configuration if you're going to be dealing with a VRF. So now what we're going to do is we're going to type in interface tunnel 100. And we're going to, actually I have more to go. Crypto IPsec profile, or I'm sorry, IPsec transform set is going to be, we're going to say is going to be VRF. 
question mark, and we're going to say this is going to be an ESP AES for the uh, the encryption, and then for the HMAC we're going to do SHA-1, and we're going to do that. And we're going to say the mode is going to be transport because we're dealing with GRE and not unicast. We're going to type in exit IPsec or I'm sorry crypto IPsec profile. We're going to name this profile is going to be DMPPN. Question mark at the enter key, and we're going to set the transform set to be DMPPN. Okay, that's the proposal tag. Um, oh, VRF, sorry, uh, VRF, and there we go. So there we have it. So you, you can apply multiple proposal tags if you like, but I'm going to be choosing uh, that. So I'm going to type in do show run section crypto. All right. So the configuration you're going to see here is exactly what we're going to copy into router four. The config on five and ten on seven is going to be a bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy this information over to router four. So we already have it in play. We're going to exit out of here and exit out of here. I'm going to right click and copy that in. I'm going to go back to router 2 and I'm going to type in interface tunnel 100. And I'm going to say the tunnel protection is IPsec profile and the profile name is DMVPN. Okay. Now, what will end up happening here is Isocamp will get turned on, but our initial EIG or PG agencies will fail until crypto is in play. So I'm going to go ahead and on router 4, I'm going to do the exact same configuration I just did for uh, BGP because I need to set that up. I'm going to type in VRF definition is DMVPN. The route distinguisher is going to be 2456 colon 1. The uh, route distinguisher is arbitrary. You could use anything you'd like. Address family IPv4, so we can uh, turn that address family on for that. Interface fast 1 slash 0. Do show run interface fast 1 slash 0. We're going to type in VRF forwarding is going to be, in this case, DMVPN. We're going to reapply the IP address at the interface level. And we're going to type in router BGP 2456. Type in address family IPv4 VRF DMVPN. And we're going to type in neighbor is going to be, neighbor is going to be 43.0.0.3. Remote AS is going to be 3. And that's going to get that adjacency up and running inside the VRF. Give that just a moment here to come up. All right, so we have a notification error. Do show run section BGP. Where did I go wrong? Oh, there it goes. You know what? That does that. It it does that every now and then. Yeah, I think it's just a GNS3 bug. So I'm gonna exit out of here. I'm gonna type in no address family IPv4. That's gonna bring the adjacency down we originally had. So it's to do show run BGP again. There we have it. So we're only gonna read the DMVPN config, which is good. We're gonna exit out of here and we're type in interface. Tunnel 100, where the IP address is going to be 10.100.1.4 slash 24. We're going to type in the tunnel mode is going to be GRE multipoint. The tunnel source is going to be fast 1 slash 0. The tunnel VRF is DMVPN. The tunnel key is 100. And what we're going to focus on now is going to be the VR, uh, the NHRP specific stuff. We're going to type in IP NHRP next top server is going to be, in this case, is going to be 10.100.1.2. The IP NHRP map multicast to 23.0.0.2. And we're going to type in IP NHRP map this address to this address. And then we type in IP NHRP authentication is going to be Cisco. IP NHRP and HRP um, network ID is going to be 100. And we're going to say, now it's not going to come up. It doesn't matter how many lines of configuration I put in here, it's just not going to come up. We're going to type in tunnel protection is IPsec profile. IPsec profile, and I said DMVPN. 
Ice at camp is on. And we're going to type in do show IP interface brief. That is up. We're going to go to router 2. Do show IP interface brief. 10.101.2, which is good. I'm going to go back to router 4. Now, the problem what you're going to have here is if you don't have the, um, if something's wrong to where we had the, on router 4, we didn't have the adjacency come up. We type in do show IP EIG RP neighbors. We had no neighbors. If we go to router 2, we we did have the neighbor come up, right? Yeah. That That's a problem. And you know how it's a problem? Because we have a misconfiguration. Do show do show run interface tunnel 100. We have to come back in here and take a look at exactly what we got going on. So we're going to say the tunnel. Let's just make sure our configure is right. Do show run interface tunnel 100. Oh, that would be a problem. The um, the authentication is incorrect. So we're going to type in this. We're going to say um, IP authentication is going to be Cisco. Once that authenticates, assuming everything else is right, let me just make sure that uh, do show run section crypto. Battle looks good, which is good. Oh, there it goes. It just took a just took longer than I was anticipating. That's all. So we have that adjacency up and running right now. Go back to R2. That adjacency is up, and then we're going to go back to router four and do show IP route. Okay, that's good. That's everything we were looking for. So that's a good sign. <coughs> so now we're going to go to router five and do the exact same thing, except for it's going to be a little bit different here on how we set this up. We're going to type in uh, interface tunnel one hundred. We're going to type in uh, IP address is going to be 10.100.1.5 slash 24. The IP, or sorry, the tunnel mode is going to be GRE multipoint. The tunnel source is going to be fast 1 slash 0. The tunnel BRF, oh, no tunnel BRF here. Tunnel key is going to be 100. We're going to type in the IP NHRP map multicast to 23.0.0.2 IP NHRP map and we're going to say this address here to this address here IP NHRP authentication is Cisco all caps this time IP NHRP network ID is going to be 100 and the um, do show run interface tunnel 100 uh, that looks good I think I'm missing something over here tunnel 4 uh, next stop server. That's it. The IP NHRP next stop server is 20 is 10.100.1.2. Now the thing we have to do now is we actually have to go in here and apply the configuration uh, with crypto. So interface tunnel 100 IP uh, tunnel protection is IPsec profile. And we're going to say DNVPN. The configuration profile is not defined, that, but that's okay. Do show run interface tunnel 100. I don't know if it actually took. It did not. So we're going to type in crypto uh, isocamp policy 100. We're going to type in the encryption is AES. The uh, authentication is pre-share. The group is 2. The hash is SHA. We're going to exit out of here. Type in crypto isocamp key is going to be Cisco. And the address is going to be all zeros. And then we're going to type in the crypto IPsec transform set is going to be DMVPN and this does actually let's go keep the same BRF and then we're going to say this is going to be the same and this is going to be the same Oops. and that the mode is transport exit out of here and crypto IPsec profile is going to be DMVPN and we're going to set the transform set of VRF and of voila.
So now we're going to type in interface tunnel 100 again, and IPsec or tunnel protection IPsec profile is DMVPN. And now that we have that set up, IsoCamp will go on, and then momentarily we should get a GRE, or we should get a um, a, conf a connection over GRE via DMVPN because of the um, the, the EIGRP configuration. Just make sure do show run section EIGRP. You want to, uh, to me, things just don't happen fast enough in GNS3. So we're saying 10. So 10 should go across the wire. And just to prove that we do have reachability, we're going to type in do ping 23.0.0.2. I can ping it. That's a good sign. So it is taking longer than anticipated again. Um, let me just make sure everything is correct. So do show run section, or sorry, uh, interface tunnel 100. All that looks good. Oh, you know what? Uh, that's our problem right there. Um, interface tunnel 100. We're going to say IP. And you'll get good to where you can spot this stuff pretty quick. And we're going to say that do show run interface tunnel 100. And it's no, and pull this guy out. And everything else looks pretty good. I'm going to go to... I want to see why this isn't working. Do show run section EIGRP. Oh, there it goes. It just, again, just took longer than anticipated. That's all. So we have that. I'm going to type in do show IP route. And now we have both BGP routes and EIGRP routes. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is if I wanted to get to EIGRP, it's like I wanted to ping the 10.1.12, so I want to get to this route right here. So ping, or do ping dot one. If I do trace, that same address, and I go numerically, it goes right over, it goes over the uh, DMVPN. The reason why? Because it's going directly over, it's, it's, a, sh it's a shorter path but not necessarily the um, the best administrative distance. Now I'm not advertising BGP into EIGRP. I'm not advertising a default route via EIGRP. So it's going to go based off of its uh, shortest path, even though administrative distance wise. Um, it, but the reason why it's going to choose EIGRP is simply for the fact that it's learning it via EIGRP. It didn't learn it via BGP. It doesn't know how to get there via BGP. So it's gonna. It's already knows how to, It already has a path to that. So now that we have that one in play, we're gonna go over to router six, and we're gonna basically steal router 5's configuration. So we're gonna type in do show run interface um, uh, tunnel 100, and we're gonna say we're gonna grab this config right here, and we're gonna copy it into router seven. Because that's where I want this config to work. And I'm gonna pull up Notepad and bring this guy over. And you will learn to love Notepad when you're studying for your CCIE. And we're going to paste that there. And we're going to say this is going to be dot seven, And everything else looks good. We're also going to come up here and we're going to type in. We're going to do a do show run section crypto. I'm going to grab this config out as well. And we're going to do that. The reason I'm doing that before that is because the profile is created here. And then that gets us that configuration. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to configure 7, but it's not going to work. I can tell you that right now. It's just not going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work, and I'll just make sure on 7 that, uh, okay, EIGRP is running. So we're going to exit out of here. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure the config looks good. And it does. I'm just going to copy and paste this in. Just... Just to save time, it's, I'm already at the half hour mark and I don't want to take any more of your time than I have to. Or that you're willing for, to let me have. So the tunnel is up, everything looks good, right? So we have that in place.
Now the problem is going to be that we we won't form the EIGRPG since no matter how much I try. The reason for that is because this configuration here isn't set up, so he doesn't know how to get to there. So that's going to be our main problem. So we need to go over here on R6, and we need to be able to nat that traffic. But the problem, and I and I have to be specific when I do this. Normally on the router six, I would type in interface fast one slash zero. I would type in IP nat outside, and go to fast one slash zero and IP nat inside, and then I would type in a uh, access or IP access list, and I would use a stand. Or I'm sorry, exit out of here. I would use a standard access list to do a permit IP any or I permit any, and then that would allow any type of traffic to go through. The drawback to doing that though is if I do that, then what's going to end up happening is the NATs are going to cap and automatically. Now, which might be a good thing for some people, but if you're looking for specifics, that is not going to be the way to do it. We're going to type in the IP access list extended, and we're going to type in the name is going to be for a DMVPN, question mark, and hit the enter key. We're going to set, come in here and we have to do a, uh, a permit I'm sorry, permit, and we have to be specific in how we do this. We're going to do a permit of UDP from the host of, this is going to be 30, I'm sorry, 36.0.0.6 to the host, I'm sorry, uh, for any equal to port 500. And we're also going to do one where it is um, host, and we're going to say the host name is going to be 10.1.10.1. Sorry, 10.1.67.7 on port EQ to port 500. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for 4500, and that's going to be for DNB anything behind that. And we're going to put that in play. We're gonna, and this is the specific stuff. We're gonna put a permit IP any any. Okay, so we can allow any other type of traffic that goes through. And we're gonna exit out of here. We're gonna type in the IP NAT inside source list, and we're gonna say in this case DMVPN, and we're gonna map it to the interface of fast one slash zero, and we're gonna say overload it. Okay, we're gonna do that. Now that's gonna allow the traffic to go through. Now, if we go over to router 7 now, we have to have a way of getting the traffic to there now. So 6 is not running EIGRP. If we go over here and type in do show run section EIGRP, it's not running. So we have to turn EIGRP on because 7 doesn't know how to get to 6. Now we could go to 7 and put a default route on there, but that's kind of defeating the purpose. But you could do that and just point everything towards router 6 and type in IP route, default route, Dot zero to pin dot one dot sixty seven dot six, and that's going to uh, point a default route to it. So we're going to do show IP route, right? So we get a default route now. So I, if I want to type in, um, go through here. If we type in do show run interface tunnel one hundred, we have all of our configuration situated. I also want to go here and do a okay. So BGP, it's gonna it's telling me that I have a couple. Couple issues here. I'm not sure why. Oh, I know, I know. Ha ha ha. The problem we have when it comes to BGP in this type of setup is we're filtering BGP traffic. So we type in do show IP NAT translations. You'll see that we have BGP is failing. Okay. It's um, notifications received. Do show IP BGP neighbor or uh, summary. It's an idle. So it was up and active. Now it's broken because we have to let that through. So it's going to be one of those things where you have to be careful when you're doing this. So we have to go through here and we have to filter that out. Now we did a uh, do show uh, access list. We do have an, a permit statement in here, right? Of anything going through. The drawback to that being though is it's and it's continuing to go up. So what I'm going to do is. I've advertised on three. If I type in do show run section BGP, I've advertised the BGP address. So I did a redistribute connected. So it's being advertised. So I'm actually going to go to six. 
and I'm going to turn BGP off. I'm going to type in no router BGP uh, 2456. I'm also going to type in IP route of uh, it's 36.0.0.3. Okay, so it's going to be bidirectional. So we type in do ping of 23.0.0.2. We're still going to be able to reach the destination, right? And that's the important part. But you'll notice I still don't have an adjacency here. So you have to be careful when you're doing this so that you don't mess things up. So I'm going to come in here and we have to figure out a way to get traffic from here across, right? Because right now we don't have it situated. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this guy. So right now, this guy is a spoke. He's behind NAT. I've gone in here and I've specified the NAT, or or did I? We go in here and do a um, a do show run interface. Or I'm sorry, uh, do do show run section NAT. Sorry, do show run. If I type in a do do show IP, that's weird. Um, do show access list. You'll see here that I'm pointing to 67.7, right? What's wrong with that picture? I did this on purpose. I just wanted to show you the uh, the point of it, though. What's wrong with that? I'm sure there's hands being waved. That's the wrong IP. You are absolutely 100% correct. That is not the IP address of the tunnel. That's the IP address of the interface to the tunnel is sourcing uh, from. So. I have to come in here and I have to say uh, no 10. Actually, let me go in here and type in IP access list extended and type in DMBPN. Type in no 10, no 20. I type in 10 and permit permit UDP host equal to isocamp host and then I have to be specific to 10.100.1.7 EQ to isocamp. In this case, 500. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow this guy up with, I'm going to say, non 500, or I believe it. So I forget what the command is off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's non uh, non 500 dash isocamp. Let's see if that bugs out. Yeah, it's um, uh, permit, or, so 20 permit. Uh, UDP host 36.0.0.6 uh, EQ to 9500 camp I was right. Uh, to host of oh sorry uh, non non 500 host is going to be. Uh, it's going to be 10.100.1.7 EQ to non 500 isocamp and do that. Then I do a permit IP any any. Okay. I'll do that. Come down here do a show IP NAT translations. And now we have, well, we had the BGP stuff going back and forth though. So we're going to go ahead and 7, we're just going to let that sit for the time being. We're going to say over here and do a clear IP NAT translations star. And right now we don't have anything going through. And we're going to do a show IP, or sorry, show run section EIGRP. The config is there. Type in show IP interface brief. The 10107 network is in there. I'm going to do six. All right, so we still have BGP trying to be sent out. So then that's because of the fact that we have um, do show, I'm sorry, on three. Um, do show run section BGP. Uh, router BGP three. No, and pull this neighbor out. So then it will stop sending adjacency messages. Alright, so I'm going to bite to six. Alright, so those will time out after a period of time. So now we have a problem though. We're going to go back to six and seven. And we still don't have any, if we do a show DMVPN, oh, it is up. Haha, -ha. it's up here. 
Okay, so we have the tunnel to there, so we can ping 23.0.0.2, right? Or can we? We can't. We have no way of recursing to it. Now, if we were to go to um, on 6, show IP route, I have a default route pointing out towards there. Now, the problem that we have, though, is we ping 10.100.1.7, can't get there. So we need EIGRP running. So we're going to go up here and type in router EIGRP uh, 1, type in network of 10.0.0.0, and be done. So that's going to form an adjacency with router uh, 7. Let me just double check, show IP interface brief. Oh, haha! -ha. I'm like, well, no wonder it's not working. Interface fast 1 slash 1, no shut. That's my fault. So as soon as the interface comes up, we should also get an EIGRP adjacency. 7 should now form a voila. So now we have our adjacency up and running. We technically don't need the adjacency to 6, but it's good practice to still have it. Paint 23002. Perfect. Now, show IP route. We have a bunch of EIGRP routes, right? Now, or do we? We have that we can do a trace route to 10.1.12.1. And we go over the EIGRP adjacency. That works for over the tunnel. However, if we decide to go and we want to say, we want to learn a route from router 6, if we go to router 6 and we do a show IP route, we're not learning anything from 7. We're not learning anything from, from 4. Now, I mentioned earlier that on router 2, we have to disable a couple things. We're going to type in do show run section EIGRP, right? I'm running named mode EIGRP. So we have to go under here and we have to go to the network of this guy. We're going to do network and we're going to type in um, inter AF interface tunnel 100. We're going to type in no split horizon and we're going to type in no next top self. Okay. That also enables ROS to be propagated in between our spoke sites as well as it allows us to do phase 2 DMBPN. We're going to go back to 7. And do a show IP route, and now we have other route, other traffic, but we have a default route pointing to router um, router six, which is fine. Um, it will take a moment for some of that stuff to come up. Um, but right now we're not advertising anything on six, though. You notice that? Type in uh, show IP interface brief. We're going to go up here. We're we'll type in um, do show run section EIGRP. So 10. So we can go in here and type an interface loopback, uh, IP address of 10.255.6.6 slash 24. Go over to router 7, and then we'll see that route gets propagated. And notice what the next top is. 10.167.6. Well, if we do a trace route to 10.255.6.6, we go right to... 10.167.6. Oh, well, is that the route we want to go? No, it's not. You don't want to go that route. We want to go the route towards the tunnel. Is it getting there? Well, yeah, it's getting there. But is that the direction we want to go? No, we don't. We want to actually remove that default route. I'm going to type in no IP route 10.1.67.6.6. We do a do show IP route again. Now it goes, the next hop is now that. So we're going to do a, another trace route. But now we're going to go about 67.6. But if we do a show ISIC, show crypto, ISA, ISA, we have a tunnel to that address. Uh, you know what? There's a problem with the EIGRP adjacency. Show run interface, um, interface tunnel 100. Let's see here. Something isn't quite right. Does four learn it? Show IP route. Yeah, four's not learning it. Two came in here. Hmm. 
What is that time out? Oh, you know what? Um, I think I know what the problem is. Deleting that default route. Deleting that default route screwed us up. Because now we, uh, we lost everything. It's fast, uh, it's fast even at 1 slash 0, so we do a trace route to that address. It gets to there, but I bet you any money it, um, show IP route. We trace route to 10.255.1. I'm sorry, 6.6. .6. We, that's a little weird, okay. Um, problem we have though is we're not going over the tunnel. We should be learning that address from the tunnel, not from router. So yeah, we have a problem with the EIGRP JSONZ. So let me do a show IP EIGRP neighbors. We have a we have a Q count. Why do we have a Q count? We need to put that default route back in IP route. And 10.1.67.6. I don't need that. I don't need that route because I have EIGRP. EIGRP gets me to where I need to go. Two. Let's check and do a show DMB pin. Let me ping 10.100.1.7. Okay, yeah, so we have a, it's broken at the moment. So let me go ahead and see, uh, let's troubleshoot this. So now you guys are on my, you're fresh with me, and I don't know what's broke. How often do I not know what's broke? Not very often. So, um, so we have a tunnel issue here. Let us see. So now we need to figure out the, what's broke. So let me and it's that is broke. So show run type section crypto. I don't think it's the crypto that's broke. Crypto looks good. Ping 23.0.0.2. Let's go to six and do a show IP NAT translations. Show run section NAT. Those NATs aren't showing up. Show run. Oh, I know why. Oh my. Sometimes I wonder. Okay, so I know what the problem is. So it's not the NAT. It's not an access list we have to do. It's a NAT. So do show run section or uh, do show access list, right? So we have these access lists in here, right? This is not where you configure the stuff. You configure this underneath the NAT. So I'm going to go into an exit. I'm going to type in IP NAT uh, inside source static and we're going to say it's going to be UDP so we're going to have to allow a couple different things through. We have to allow um, ESP from the local IP address of 10.100.1.7 to the interface of fast1 star 0 and it's going to also uh, hit that. We're going to type in IP NAT inside source uh, static, and we're going to say UDP. And we're going to say the uh, UDP encapsulation is going to be from 10.100.1.7, um, and the port is going to be 500 to the uh, to 360000 500 and we're going to do the exact same thing again, but we're going to do 4500 and 4500, and we do a show IP. NAT translations. So there they are in play, right? 
and we're gonna go back to seven. There's our adjacency. That's what we wanted. Okay, so at least I'm not too concerned about this one. Actually, I kind of am because show IP e IP e -A -G -R -P neighbors. Okay, we still have a Q count. So that did cover some of our stuff. So what we're gonna type in uh, show access list. We're gonna type in uh, IP access list uh, extended and DMVPN. We'll type in no 10, no 20. We're committing everything else, so that's good. So now if I go to 7, I try to ping um, 23.0.0.2. Show IP route. IP route 10.1.67.6. Hmm, imagine that. Okay, so I needed it. <laughs> I did need that default route. And and there's our adjacency is up again. So I needed a way to get to there. So that was my fault. I do apologize about that. So now if we do a show DMVPN. Do a show IP route. Now we have routes coming in, and now we have the six network. And notice where it's it's still learned via the uh, that uh, that interface though. It's not coming in over the tunnel like I want it to be. Um, do a trace route to ten dot two fifty five dot six dot six. Hmm. That shouldn't be happening. We show crypto ISA SA. It's technically working. Let's do a uh, let's do this on four, and because seven, it's actually not. It's not actually a hundred percent. The reason I say that is because uh, we should be learning this route over GRE, and not over. Um, we should be learning it via the DMVPN. Because you notice, look at this metric versus this metric. The same amount of hops away. So if we were to go in here and say, let's go to uh, six, and oh, I'm sorry, let's go to four, and go to global config. We do. So we have the six network here. See now, it's, now notice how it's so much higher, and it's set up. Let's go and do a trace route to 10.255.6.6. We go over 10 to seven to six, and then we go over. We go 10 to seven to or seven to six. But notice where we're, we're getting six. Why is it going that way first? Why is it going to that is? Oh wait a minute! Uh, <laughs> did I seriously just do that? I did. I'm like that doesn't make any sense. Why is that happening? Uh, wow. Okay. You saw it here first, folks. No interface. Put back zero. Okay, here's what I did that was really, really dumb. I created an interface loopback on router six. Router six is my exit point for the network. I meant to create that on router five. So we're gonna type in do show run, do show run section e uh, eigrp, and we should have a ten network in there. So interface loopback zero. IP address of 10.255.5.5 slash 24. We advertise that in. We go to 7. We go to show IP route. We should learn that 7 route in here momentarily. Not sure why it's not advertising it. Hmm, 2255. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, okay, so it came across. So I'm, I was looking for the different IP. So we're going to do a trace route to 10.255.5.5. We go to 2 to 5. See, I was putting something on the EI. I'm like, why is this coming in over the, the, the next hop? It shouldn't be going that route. Same thing with 4. 
Let's go to 4. And we're going to type in config t interface loopback 0 IP address of 10.255.4.4 slash 24. Go over to 7, do a show IP route. There's the 4, do the trace route to 4.4, .4, and then we go to right to 4. We do a show crypto ISASA. We have a bunch of tunnels in here. So 5305, I have a key exchange issue with 5. Not sure why that's a problem. I don't key exchange five. Uh, I might have a bug with uh, with that setup, but I'm not going to worry my concern myself too much with that. What I really want to show you is this right here. Show IP NAT translations. We're going to have UDP ports going out here. Notice how that we have all these inspections going out to seven, and we have them going out to five and forty five hundred and whatnot. So. Um, there's a problem with uh, the connection. I think it's just the GNS3 bug, but I do apologize about such a long configuration, but I ran into just a couple of issues. But let me quickly recap what we've covered. So far, we've hit the main components of DNVPN, multi-point GRE with IPsec, right? So this is going to be components in DNVPN you're probably going to run into. These are the main components and uh, front door VRF. These three components are what you're going to see in IWAN. Minus, we're not doing zone-based firewall, and we're not doing PFR v3. Uh, so beyond that, that's what we're going to be dealing with. We have a VRF here and a VRF here. We have no VRF here, so just pure internet. And then we have it behind a net setup, which could be a firewall. What you really need to do here is, even though our spoke is back here, you need to permit UDP 500 and UDP um, 4500 through the device. That will get you your access where you need it to go. And then once you have that in play, then you're able to get the traffic to where you want it to go. So that's the, that's the important part that you need to make sure you have and understood. So um, everything else looks good. I If you have any questions, feel free to drop a line in the comments below. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.